going on guys it's Nick the RV technician and today I want to talk to you about the heart of your RV um, and I know some of you guys think that may mean a few things but I'm going to show you the one thing that your RV cannot live without that you absolutely have to have and that is your RV converter some of you already know that um, your RV converter is what takes 120 volt AC power and converts it to 12 volt DC power um, some people will just consider this to be the battery charger, but it is so much more than that And that is why it is the most important part of your RV And here are a few reasons why your RV cannot live without it for starters like most motorhomes This class A motorhome has a bank of several batteries um, Some only have two some only have one and you get down to the travel trailers and fifth wheels You may only have one battery, but that battery is important and that converter that charges it is even more important why? Because most of the things in your RV will not work without it. And I already know, some of you are thinking, well, what if I'm plugged in all the time? Or what if I'm on generator power all the time? And sure, while you may be off-grid on the generator, or you might be plugged in at a campground 100% of the time, you still need a battery and you still need a converter. Now, why in the world would you still need to have battery power and converter power when you're plugged in? Like I said, this converter is going to take the 120 volts um, AC from being plugged in from shore or being on the generator and it's going to convert down to 12 volts DC. And again, I know so many people get confused by this. You're plugged in or generator running, like why could you possibly need your batteries? There's a big, ma there's a big major player in that one and here it is right here. The reason you need your converter or battery power, 12 volt DC power in general, is this guy right here guy right here, this guy right here, and a bunch of other ones. Your converter or your batteries both in conjunction, your batteries can't do it forever on their own unless you have a huge solar setup, are what's needed to power these 12 volt control boards. These 12 volt control boards are going to be found in pretty much every appliance you're going to find around your RV. Until you get into the residential refrigerators like this one, you're going to have 12 volt control boards in your refrigerator. Um, which tell it what to do. So without 12 volt, your refrigerator will not work even if it's plugged in. Again, that does not apply to most residentials, but most RV refrigerators work that way. Um, some of them are even 12 volt now where they're strictly 12 volt. You're of course going to need 12 volt for that. Your air conditioner. I know a lot of you think, well, that's plugged in. Why do I need 12 volts? Again, your control board in there is 12 volts. Um, some TVs are 12 volt in RVs. Some of them have a wire going to the back where it's not plugged into an outlet. Um, that one's not super common, but it's still worth mention. All of these things here, switches. Now, while these ones are a little fancier and kind of have a touch feature, it's not how all of them work. Um, you may just have your standard switches. Either way, all of that is 12 volt because all of your lighting is 12 volt. Your fans are 12 volt. Um, water pump is 12 volt. I have seen very few, there are some 120 volt AC water pumps, but for the most part, at least 90% of you are going to have a 12 volt water pump. Slide rooms. Can you take a wild guess on what type of voltage those require? You guessed it, 12 volt DC. You need that same voltage, that 12 volt DC to power your slide rooms as well. Some of you guys that have the uh, range tops that have the automatic igniters, not these ones where you have to turn them. Some of them have a button where it's an automatic ignition. You're going to need 12 volt for that too. When it comes down to it, your microwave is probably one of the very few appliances that almost never has a 12 volt control board. That should work as long as you're plugged in no matter what. Assuming your lights are still working if you don't have any 12 volt, but your microwave will. And since a lot of you have this little guy here, your leveling system, I'll mention that that is also 12 volt, just like your slide rooms. Um, the only difference between this being 12 volt and the rest of the stuff is this prefers you being plugged in. This does not like to run off of battery. Um, that's a whole different topic, but I thought it was worth mentioning. If you're having troubles with your leveling system, it's because they don't like to run just on battery. They like a lot of power, so they like being plugged in or having the generator running while you're doing it as well. And when you want to get really technical, your 120 volt AC outlets may even be relying on that 12 volt system, such as your batteries. So even off grid, that 12 volt system is what's helping you guys have 120 volts AC to power things like your TV and air conditioning while you're off grid. You may be charging those batteries from solar or different sources, but the 12 volt system is still very much a big player in providing power in the RV. So that is the system you want to keep the healthiest, your 12 volt system.
I know a lot of that can get really overwhelming trying to understand the AC, DC, inverter, converter, all of that. I do my best to explain it here, but ultimately if you want to educate yourself and understand more about your RV and how it works, the NRVTA home study course um, is phenomenal. I've marketed it for a little while on my TikTok. Um, I haven't mentioned it too much on YouTube yet. If you're interested in that, you can find it on my website, thatrvtech.com. I honestly cannot recommend that home study course enough. I can bring you guys all the tips and tricks I possibly can here. But having that base knowledge and understanding of how your RV works and how the systems work and how to diagnose them yourself is going to save you a ton of money. And then it might make some of my videos more understandable for you if you don't already understand those basics of your RV. And again, you'll find a link directly to that site to sign up for that uh, on my website, thatrvtech.com. Back to the basics, your 12 volt system and why it's important, right? The control boards, the controls, the systems, your lighting, water pumps, the 12 volt system does so much more than most people assume it does in the RV. All right, so we got why this is important out of the way. So let's talk about some common issues you may have with this or determining whether you have a bad converter or not. Um, so the first thing that you should check when you have a converter issue or anything wrong with your 12 volt systems is one to make sure you have good voltage going to the battery you can check it at the battery um, while plugged in uh, in the converter operating you should have somewhere above 13.3 13.4 volts at the battery um, you can check it here too you may have a converter like this uh, you may have a converter that's built into your actual breaker and fuse panel um, kind of in your power distribution center on some older models. They do still use those, but this is more commonly what you'll see today. It'll get, be a little different when you get into the inverter chargers on some of the Class A's um, and systems with big lithium and solar setups may have something a little different, but most of you guys are gonna have something like this. So if you know you're not getting any voltage, you know, your batteries are dead, they won't charge even plugged in, the very first thing you should check is the fuses on your converter. If you ever get uh, any kind of reverse polarity situations or dead shorts or any issues, these fuses will blow and completely stop charging. So if your converter just seems to stop working overnight, one, check the breaker for the converter, and then two, check these two fuses. If those check out and you still don't have above 13.3, 13.4 volts DC coming out of here, you very likely have a bad converter if you have confirmed of course that it is getting good power so once you confirm that you have no power coming out of the inverter you'll need to check to make sure that the outlet that this is plugged into or the source of 120 volt ac is good as well if you confirm that it is getting good voltage and not putting out voltage then the converter itself is toast there's not much that's serviceable in there unless you really know what you're doing if you did you probably wouldn't be watching this video um, so yeah, the fuses are probably some of the biggest culprits. I've seen tons of people come in saying their converter's bad, they need it replaced, and really it's just these two fuses here. One or the other will cause the system to stop giving out power completely. Some of the ways you can tell if your converter's going bad, but not necessarily bad, is low voltage to the battery, um, which could be a battery issue as well. Um, that's a story for another day. If you, if you have a bad battery, um, ultimately the, char the charger will not be able to get it up to the proper voltage. It will cause excess strain and eventually will actually kill the converter as well. Um, so low voltage, um, which is determined by a meter, test light, something like that, or some of the easier ones to spot are slow moving slide rooms, flickering lights when using other things like your water pump or your slide rooms. Um, there's a few other situations that would be a dead giveaway and most of the time it has something to do with your lights dimming when doing other things when you're plugged in you should have good battery power and you don't um, the other one uh, of course again is uh, it not charging your batteries properly but that can come down to being bad batteries as well so if you think your converter is going bad check it out if your converter suddenly stops working again these are your two key points you want to check and always make sure this thing is nice and healthy. Don't let a lot of dust build up in here. Um, one of the main killers of converters is them not getting proper airflow to cool. So make sure that this is free of any obstructions and that dust isn't building up in here or anything like that. You can blow them out a little bit. Just be careful around that fan. You don't want to spin it off and break one of the blades on it. But that's your RV converter. It powers your 12 volt system in your RV and it is the heart of everything in your RV for the most part. 
Thank you guys for sticking around. If you don't mind, give this video a like. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Uh, for all my future updates, I'm going to continue to try and keep uh, YouTube more regular. I know a lot of you guys came here from TikTok, which is where I started. If you're not already following me on TikTok, you can find me there. Same name, that RV Tech. Um, any products that I recommend, including the NRVTA course um, for RV owners, you can find it on my website, thatrvtech.com. Thank you guys for sticking around and have a good one.